Warning. Listening to this show may result in increased levels of inspiration, motivation, and innovation. Side effects can include the immediate urge to take massive action to build a better business and life for yourself and others. You've been warned. Welcome to Influencers Radio with your host, Jack Mize. And welcome to this episode of Influencers Radio today. Uh, you know, it's, it's always fascinating to me to talk to um, industry leaders, folks that are, you know, looked at by the, the, the professionals and the experts in different industries as the person that that helps them. If you almost think about uh, that mentor, the, the, you know, all the great doctors, psychiatrists that have that mentor that they go to um, when they run into uh, when they run into problems or or issues because. Because you really get to see behind the scenes of industries that, you know, you, you, we just have this image of the way they work. And today we're talking about financial planning, financial management. Anyone that has talked to, you know, you see everywhere, every strip center, it seems like everywhere there's, there's a karate school, a dance school, and a financial planner in, in the, 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 the suburbs of the U S and it's so hard for your average person to, you know, find a distinction because they almost are a me too business and find out, you know, is this somebody that can really help me uh, plan my financial future or is it someone that's going to, you know, sell me uh, whatever stocks or mutual funds that, that uh, their company provides. And it really is a difficult decision and people are always looking for that reason. They're looking for that tipping point on who they should choose. And when I talk to a lot of people that uh, help business owners, that's what they focus on. They, they focus on getting the, the masses to choose them for their provider. And I've even talked to financial uh, people that help financial advisors, and their main focus is to cast that wide net to get as many people into their funnel as prospective uh, customers or clients as they can. But what really intrigued me about my guest today is that, you know, he, he is definitely one of the go-to guys when it comes to helping financial managers, uh, financial planners, but he takes a little bit of a different approach. Rather than getting everyone to choose you, he works with his clients to say, hey, you need to be a little picky yourself about who you're trying to attract because that can be, have as big an impact on your business as as getting the, the masses to choose you. And so today, my guest is Scott Keffer. Um, if you're in the financial planning industry, financial manager, you help uh, people you know, manage, build their wealth, build their financial portfolio, plan for uh, you know their financial future, then you probably know who Scott Keffer is. But today we're going to go into a little bit deeper on his um, methodology of building not just a a practice but building the right kind of practice that you're not killing yourself and giving up your own time and your own life while you're helping others to build and enjoy their own scott welcome to influencers radio thanks jack it's great to be on with you today and uh excited to share with your listeners well it it, it, it really is in in you know what we talked about and, and it really goes against what a lot of people do in just about any industry you know the, when they talk about their marketing they're they talk about casting the widest net possible how can i get as many eyeballs and as many people to talk to um and you know the more the more people that i get to set appointments to talk to the bigger and better my business is going to grow and you pretty quickly uh, opened my eyes to that is probably one of the quickest ways to hit burnout in in this industry uh, than anything else. And what was really remarkable is that you seem to have a crystal ball. Um, you know what most of these financial planners and financial managers are going through. You know where they are sitting at in their life 
And so you hit the ground running when you start working with these folks. Um, look at that crystal ball and kind of tell me who that person is. Well, they are uh, any business owner particularly, but the financial advisor, money manager, estate planner has been in the business a couple of decades plus, midlife. They're sitting at their desk uh, way too long. They're working too many hours, and they're not being paid much more than they were a number of years ago. They continue to dream about the, the day and the time, the year. I would call it the year, the year when everything's going to be different, right? It's going to change in terms of the time I'm going to have available to be there for my family and my friends, the money that I should be paid because of my wisdom, my knowledge, my experience, my training, the time when I'll finally work with the right kind of clients. I'll be recognized, not like every Tom, Dick, and Harry advisor, but I'll be recognized for who I am and the kind of value I bring. And they're at their desk and they're frustrated. They've, they've uh, invested money before. They've bought the marketing gizmos and the marketing tricks. They continue to go to the industry events and they hear people say, this is what you should do. And they go home and try it and it doesn't work. And so they're, they're a little skeptical. Like you said, they're, they're a little burned out, I think, in the sense of uh, giving up on their dream. They, uh, they help people uh, discover and live out a dream lifestyle. And they wonder if they're ever going to be able to have it themselves, whether they'll have the kind of money as well as the time. And they're, they're burning their time away with family. And they know, you know, with family, you have limited time to do that. Their family and friends. And so they've, it's not their fault. The one thing I want them to know, Jack, it's not their fault. They continue to be taught these myths and these lies by the industry and they're really death traps. Like you said, they're, they're pushing them right into the commodity corner and many of them feel stuck. They're just stuck. You know, what I find that was just such sort of the remarkable irony to me is they are almost a, a, representation of the people that they're helping they are almost you know we, we talked about how it's the uh, the you know the plumber with the broken uh, uh pipes the the mechanic with the uh the the car that won't start because they're so busy helping their clients and and building clients and and going after um anyone that will you know talk to them pr- 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 prospects that it causes them to completely you know neglect ignore their own you know what they're really after which is that 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 lifestyle with the to have a business that they can you know enjoy but also spend time on the things that are important with family and causes and things like that that uh they that they have you know is this something that they look up in the middle of their career and think oh my the clock is ticking. This is not where I was wanting to be. This is not where I want to be. This is not where I need to be. Well, I think when you're young in any uh, business, any industry, Jack, hope reigns eternal. But as the time clicks along, you start to say, what, when will I begin to experience that? And if you take, I mean, they they don't understand that it's not, just getting into business and they were taught that if you get into business and you do good work, you'll get paid what you should pay, be paid and your, your prospects will find you. Well, that's a huge myth because that doesn't indeed happen. And in fact, if you, you look at just business owners in general, if you took a thousand of them who started a business and you put them into a room and you said, if your business failed or you decided to go out of business, you should leave the room. At the end of 10 years, there would be about 50 left. And then if you said, I want you to leave the room if you're not uh, uh, grossing, not income, just bringing in at least a million dollars of revenue, 45 of those remaining 50 would leave. There'd only be five left in the room. And that's the, that's the task that the advisor needs to learn. And that is what, what are the, what are the secrets? What are the principles? What are the X factors that allow that the five of the original thousand, not only to survive, but really to, th- to thrive by 
getting up to the million dollar plus level where you can have the kind of income, take off the kind of time and, you know, really be about what you're put on the planet for, which is to have an impact on your family, your friends, your clients, of course, but the causes that you care about deeply. Well, I, I think you really uh, hit the nail on the head when, you know, you, well, what you're describing is people that have, are very knowledgeable in their trade. They're very knowledgeable in the service that they provide, but what they have not spent time or, or understanding is the side of a, a building their own business. So they may be very good at what they do for clients, but they may not be very good at understanding how to build their business. And I know we talked about when they first started, you know, when you're going after uh, getting new clients, attracting new clients, casting that wide net that, you know, you're, you're willing to talk to anyone. You're not, you know, discriminating necessarily um, to who you're going to, to try to get in front of to talk to. And I can say, I mean, I've walked into a Walmart the other day and there's people sitting in there doing people's taxes and, and, you know, every possible skill and, and trade uh, from, from buying and selling real estate to, to financial planning. And clearly that the, the that's something that they need to discriminate if they're in that part of their their career. And you, one of the things you focus on and that you say is the right kind of client. All right, so let's jump right into that at first is to, to start ignoring the wrong kinds of clients and focusing on the right kind of clients. Can you kind of describe that? Because that seems to be the the, the starting point, one of the big shifts that uh, um, folks that, that follow you make that, that make a real big impact on what they're doing. Sure. Well, we show them how to solve those two biggest problems, which have nothing to do with whether they're good planners or good money managers or good estate planners, which is, one, how do I create a predictable and profitable steady stream of the right kind of clients, right? How do I get them contacting me and uh, how am I positioned in advance so that they're not only qualified, but they're interested in what I can do? And then secondly, how do I build a lifestyle friendly business so I can actually enjoy that with the, the, the money and time that, that I need to have that kind of lifestyle? And there are giant myths that I want to tell advisors, it, it's not your fault. You, you're stuck at your desk feeling frustrated and a bit skeptical. No, a lot skeptical, I think, Jack, because you've tried stuff before. You know, you've been, you've been told uh, you can build your business on referrals. And one of the big things you need to know is, first of all, you can't build your business on referrals. And whenever I say that, it usually causes the hair on people's neck to stand up. And what I mean is not that referrals aren't, aren't an excellent way, probably the best way, of course, to meet a right fit client. But the problem is you could, if, if we were going to double or triple your income, you can't double or triple referrals because they're not leverageable. You can't, you can't predictably grow them. They should be a part, but not the number one, two or three driver for your business. You want predictable systems that deliver prospects to you. The, the second is exactly what you're talking about. I would say that when I started in the business, you know, they give you a handheld mirror and the, the, the prospect qualification was if the prospect could steam the mirror. They're a, a qualified prospect and it's, uh, it creates this sense that I should work for everybody. Right? I should be open to work with anybody and everybody. And as you know, Jack, if you're, if you're everything to everybody, you're nothing to nobody. You're, you become a commodity. You become like rock salt. And the only way people choose between rock salt is, is uh, price. And so there's the, all of the traditional uh, marketing and positioning uh, strategies that are taught by the industry, taught at every industry meeting they go to, it's the same old, same old stuff. And if, if you're doing what every other financial advisor is doing, guess what? You look like every other financial advisor. And so the, the frustration comes out of what they're hearing is really not what they need to position themselves and to create the kind of marketing that not only attracts the right kind of prospects, but filters out, you know, repels the wrong kind. 
And that goes against a, a lot of what, a conventional wisdom. You kind of when you're talking about uh, the the referrals, and I know so many people spend so much time on the referrals, almost to the point of, of aggravating their current clients in 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 trying to get those referrals because they are taught that hey, referrals, uh, the, you know that that's the easiest way for you to have instant you know credibility and and a foot in the door is by the people that you already work with. But you know what you said makes sense in the fact that. That, that's something that's not really scalable um, or predictable that you can work a system to to ensure that that happens. Um, and usually yeah, people I do. Mean, imagine having knowing for certain, imagine knowing for certain that every month you're going to have prospects contacting you. And these are prospects who are pre-qualified and pre-interested. Right. Every, the game changes because now you're in a position of what what you want to create when a prospect comes in, because the prospect's coming in and they're interviewing you. But if you're in need of that prospect, it's very very bad positioning. So what you want to do is communicate to them that I'm interviewing you in the same way that you're interviewing me, creating that country club uh, sense of value, right? In the country club, you fill out an application, you have to qualify to give them money. Or you should have that same country club positioning in your uh, in your business so that prospects have to qualify, and they really should. All you have to do, tell advisor, just stop and think. I just want your, your mind to run through uh, the kind of clients that when they call, you you jump out of your seat to get on the phone with them. You, if you see their name on your calendar, you think, oh, I can't wait to get with them. Why? You're energized. They like you. You like them. They value what you uh, uh, share with them. They're interested in you and your life. They share you with other people. They listen to what you're saying. They're good decision makers. You go through, down through all those qualifications. That's your right fit client. And the question is, why are we working with non-right fit? Because you can think of, you, know, you go through your client list, it's the people that call and you think, I, I, I don't think I can talk to them again, right? They're, they're annoying, they're frustrating, they don't value what I do, they're price shoppers, they see me as a commodity, every decision's a hassle, you know, they're, you know, they think over and over and over again. So the question is, why are you doing business with those people? Why not build a business of just right fit clients where you can be energized, they can be energized, and you both love doing what you do. Yeah, well, that's one thing that I, I hadn't thought about that you, you described is, is some of the folks that, that you are working with, it's not a matter of, you know, more and more clients. They, they're, they've hit a capacity sometimes of the wrong client, and it's not a matter of I just have to scrub harder. They just don't have. They're already working 60 hours a week. And you quickly determine that they're working 60 hours a week on the wrong clients that, that if they, they did it right and positioned themselves correctly and did the right things, they could replace, you know, three bad clients or with, with one good client or even a bigger ratio than, than that. You know, what do people, you know, what, what goes through their mind when they come to that realization that, you know, I can actually fire some of these wrong clients and, and re- replace a, a, a handful of them with one right client? Well, it's an aha day that you mean I can actually be in a business that's fun and energizing and exciting to come to. And in fact, where less is more where I can work with less people and actually earn more. See, it's time, it, advisors are, are in what is commonly called a practice. Well, I'm not sure why you want to be in a practice. Why don't you move into, I, I like to show them how to create a business, and I think your business should be accountable. Your business, you invest money, time, and energy in your business, and you should hold your business accountable. It should return to you multiples just like your client wants a return for their money, you should re- be, be getting a return from your business of three things, more money, more time, and more energy. If your business isn't doing that, imagine a business that's actually giving you a return on the money you've invested, the time you've invested, and the energy. Because without those three, you can't live the impact 
you've been put on the planet to live, right? You need all three to have that kind of impact. And I don't believe they're, they're put on the planet to be in business. Their, their business is a platform, right, that will allow them to carry out the impact they've been put on the planet for. So let's just get your business, move it. You know, there are, there are proven principles and systems will allow their business to operate more automatically so that it's working even when they're not there. And that's, that's the power of a business, right? Where you're home and it's still your prospecting and your uh, marketing and your positioning are all working automatically. Yeah, well, I think, I think that's one of the, you know, from, from talking to you, one of the big transitions that a lot of your, your clients and the people that, that work with your system make is, you know, initially they think that, that, you know, this sounds great, but it's, it's, it's beyond my reach. I'm, I'm already too busy. I'm already working too much. I can't, add more to it. I just, I just don't have the capacity, uh, to do this. I've, you know, I've tried marketing. Um, I've, I've, you know, done what I've been told to do and I just don't have time to do it again. And I don't have, you, you know, the, 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 the ability to add more of this to, to what I'm doing. And it sounds, you know, like what you're, you're able to do is come right in and say, no, we're not, we're not going to add to your, your time. We're not going to add to your frustration. We're going to remove some of that stuff immediately by shifting what their 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 priorities are and and working with the right people, so I want to make sure that that folks understand that that it's not about doing more; it's about immediately doing less. You know, how quickly do you see folks being able to do less without uh, diminishing their their revenue or diminishing their turns, and actually start to see that inverse effect of working less? and generating, you know, maintaining the revenue and then even increasing it? Well, we have, we have advisors um, who are anywhere from $200,000 to $6 million, all, and, and all those ranges, Jack. And I'll say if you're at two hundred dollars or five hundred, dollars wherever you are, and imagine earning 10 times that because there are advisors who are earning 10 times what you're earning, they're not working 10 times harder than you. And in fact, if, if you're, you know, the typical advisor who's in, you know, earning a couple hundred thousand dollars, there's no way they could work twice as hard. They, they couldn't work twice as long. They're, they're already overworked. So it can't be working harder. And once they get that, then there's a, a, a a relief, I think, that comes over them because they're 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 genuine, they're committed, they're dedicated. They've listened to what they've been told by the industry. You know, work hard, work harder, and become really good at what you do, right. And if if you become really good at what you do, people will find you, and they don't, and so they work even harder. Right. My, what my dad used to tell me, you know, put your nose to the grindstone. And I always thought that was an interesting phrase because the only thing I'd end up with is, a, you know, a face without a nose <laughs> or maybe a bloody face. But, today, you know, the key in a business is not working harder. It's actually oftentimes working less hard because you've created the systems and the processes that allow you to be away. You know, the very best business, you know, think about it. Um, you know, if you think about Richard Branson, Richard Branson has 400 companies. He doesn't work 400 times harder than we do, right? He's got systems, processes in place that allow him to be on, you know, uh, Necker Island where, wherever he goes and relaxes. Well, it's the same here. We just take, show him how to take those principles and put them to work for them so they can start to enjoy your business. Well, you know, I, I think that's um, – I'm thrilled to have you on the show because that's what I feel makes you a real influencer because, you know, here's these folks that are out there influencing the lives of others, influencing the lives of their clients, um, and, you know, um, neglecting and, and having their own lives suffer, and you're able to help them turn that around and, you know, have the the business and the life that they – 
wanted that they they set out to when they first got into uh, the industry, and you're making a, an incredible impact uh, on that front with these folks. So that's why I feel that it tr- truly makes you a um, an influencer. Scott, let me ask you: How can folks find out more about you know what you're doing? Find out more about how they can kind of get off this hamster wheel, uh, if you will, and turn their business around into something that they enjoy and allows them to enjoy the other parts of their lives that they may have been missing for so long. Well, we've got, I mean, boot camps and trainings and a lot of done for you systems to help advisors, but maybe the next step, I want want to maybe offer a couple of uh, tools that would be helpful for them. Uh, One would be, uh, we've got a special report on how to position yourself as an authority and actually get qualified prospects to contact you. It's about the three critical marketing criteria that will help them repel the wrong kind and attract the right kind. Uh, so I'd like to make that available to your listeners. It's a special report that we have. There's a scorecard uh, that comes with that. There's an affluent marketing scorecard so they can actually go through and sort of score their own marketing efforts and kind of see where they are. The other thing I'd like to offer, Jack, is a. Um, uh, I was asking him if, you know, if, if you came face-to-face with a prospect sitting at, you know, uh, sitting at a, a restaurant or a you know, wherever you might be, and you were to sketch out on a napkin a way to describe what you do in in five or six minutes in a compelling way where that person would say, I want to talk to you more, right? That would be uh, terrific, wouldn't it? So I've got actually a CD where I'll share that. So if they would, if they email me at scott at scott keffer, that's S-C-O-T-T-K-E-F-F-E-R dot com, scott at scottkeffer dot com. Just put in there special report and free CD, uh, and be sure to include their their address if they want the physical CD, and I'll, I'll be happy to send the uh, special report, the scorecard, and the CD. Fantastic. Well, I certainly appreciate you doing that um, because I, I know this really does make a big impact on uh, on folks' lives. So, um, yeah, I would encourage you to uh, to do that. Um, if it sounds like something that you're in the position of, if, if Scott described you, um, saw you in that crystal ball, then, you know, you, you really have uh, absolutely nothing to lose to uh, take Scott up on this uh, on this offer for those uh, those resources. Very, very valuable resources. Scott, uh, I want to thank you very much for being on Influencers Radio today. Jack, it was great to be on, uh, great to share. Trust that your listeners got some great value from it, and I hope they've got a, a, an action step they can take as a result of listening today. All right. Well, fantastic. Thank you very much. Folks, um, check it out. And, you know, even if you aren't in the financial planning business, these are the same principles that you can use in your business, the same principles, the same obstacles that apply. Um, it's definitely something you need to look deeper into. So until next time, remember, you are the only real game changer. You've been listening to Influencers Radio. To get all past shows and updates on future shows, visit InfluencersRadio.com today or follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Influencers Radio.